And how did you hear about our services again? My drama teacher, Miss Pamela Bonds, she gave me your card. She mentioned that you represented her on her run in Star Hollow. She was wondering if you could help get me established in the entertainment. And when were these taken? Those were a part of my senior package. And when was that? Two years ago. It says here you were a leading lady in three school productions, all directed by Pamela. Yes, ma'am. You'll also notice I had three minor roles in regional productions. Antigone, Antigone, Portia, Merchant of Venice, Eliza, My Fair Lady, Beth, Little Women, Alice, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. A you sing and dance? I can sing better than I can dance, but I took ballet all through middle school and I'm classically trained vocally. Uh-huh. Do you have any other skills? I can read music and play piano, and I speak basic French and Spanish. Well, Miss Thalia, I must be blunt. I've been in this business a while. I see young hopefuls every day. The only reason I agreed to meet with you was because I owe a favor to an old friend. You have no real training. All your past credits are from a public school in a small town with an even tinier talent pool. And there is no doubt you were probably the best actress at your school, but here you are average. It is highly unlikely you will succeed in this industry. I reviewed your tapes and what potential Miss Pamela saw in you, I don't know, and it's highly unlikely other directors will see it either. I suggest you run back to Main Street, USA, get a normal job, and find a nice man to settle down with. I can pay you for your services a year in advance in cash. Miss Song, could you bring in a contract, please? It seems we have a new client. I've seen a lot of hopefuls come into this office, but none of them have stood up to Stillwater the way you have. That takes balls. You heard that? Oh yeah. Mostly it's because I was listening on the phone. What's your name? I'm Aurora. But the name's Alita. Receptionist by day, starving artist by night. Oh, a bassist in a band. Most people guess that, but I'm hoping to be a great classical actress. I prefer Ibsen, Shaw, and Shakespeare. What's your interest? Fluff musicals? Modern performance art. I don't know yet. As a kid, I was enraptured by the opulence of opera and ballet, but then I fell in love with expression through dialogue. All I know is acting makes me happy. I like you, Roar. You've got spunk. Alexandria Shakes is coming to preview talent for their summer stock productions. It's an invitation only opportunity. Let me know if you want to rehearse. Stillwater's office, how can I help you? Thank God we have finally got Bridget and Aldwin's contracts finalized. I, I know we'll find the others, but it is so good to know that we can rely on at least those heavy hitters. It takes a little bit of the pressure off of this casting process. Well, how can I help you while we're on the road? Is there something you want me to look for in the actors? Honestly, just the fact that you were coming along and running these cattle calls is a tremendous relief. <laughs> I'm excited about the new designers and the new directors that we're bringing into our season family, but, you know, better the devil you know than the one you don't. <laughs> what? You're a devil in your own right. Uh, speaking of difficult people to deal with, if during the audition process you encounter any actors who do not respect you, 
they do not have a place on our team. And it can indicate that they can't take direction. Oh, don't worry. I already have one child at home, and I will not allow you to add more in the workplace. Well, at least not ones that throw tantrums, because let's face it, all actors tend to behave like children. Lena. What? One of us has to be mean to the actors, and you're too worried about crushing their fragile little spirits and fostering creativity. It's fine. I like being the bad cop. I just, I just have a feeling with this audition, and like I'm going to miss something big. That's why you convinced the company to hire me, to be your buffer and your lookout. I'll let you know if I think you're missing an opportunity with an actor. Now go home and start packing. I'm going to send this out and then I'm going home myself. Do you have to go? It's important to bring new blood in in order to breathe new life into the stage. How long will you be gone again? Lena and I will be traveling to all the major cities. Mm. Syracuse, Carthage, Luxor, Troy, Ephesus, Rhodes. The tour is scheduled to take a month. It's really not that long. Besides, we'll take the train up for the last set of auditions. We can maybe go on a nice date afterwards. Mm. That'd be nice. What am I supposed to do without you? The absence will allow you plenty of time to practice your monologues without distraction. But I'd prefer to be practicing something else with you. I am serious. No one can know about our relationship. The only way for us to work together and stay together is for you to prove yourself. I will make you proud. But, once this is all over, and I get the part, we'll tell everyone, right? After the first show. I promise. Now, recite your monologue for me. <laughs> and this is life, toil, and wherefore should I toil? Because my father could not keep his place in Eden? What have I to do with... with I shall come to know my sin. But if the sin is with my judges, I could wish them no fuller measure of evil than they, on their part, meant wrongfully to me. Your teacher was right. You do have raw talent. I thought I would have more to coach you on, but the only thing I can say is, don't let your nerve fool you. They seemed to mess you up at the beginning and you had trouble connecting with the scene. You need to captivate that director from the start. Applause from Lalita. You must be good to have a fake kind of a response. Aurora, this is my obnoxious roommate, Andrew. Andrew, this is Aurora. She's auditioning with us for Alexandria Shakes. She's Michaela's newest client. Oh. So you're the one who stood up to Michaela. Welcome to our humble abode. Came in the tail end of your monologue. You're auditioning with an we performed it in high school. It's, it's my favorite part. You're auditioning with us? You don't strike me as a Shakespeare fan. Yeah, sure I don't. I was on basketball scholarship for four years. I even helped the team win a championship. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Uh, don't apologize. He just acts all high and mighty because he's able to disprove the actor's stigma. <laughs> Come on now, don't act like you don't revel in your individuality. How did you two meet? The city has some cool amateur theater scenes. Uh, he was performing at Miss Cassavani. Totally sold himself in the role. So I bought him a beer afterwards to learn all his secrets. He thought I was hitting on him, so he invited me to go to other productions around the city. The crush quickly ran out when I realized she was a bro than a love interest. A local company was having a vaudeville throwback competition in their season, so we started practicing our routine here. 
she would spend a lot of nights on the couch. When we would wrap up rehearsal at 2 a.m., um, she didn't want to walk back in the dark. When my roommate moved out, it seemed like the logical explanation to invite her to stay. She's like the stray cat you wind up adopting. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sure she'll talk me into adopting you as well. Too late. She's already been inducted into the family of misfit toys. Oh, it's late. I've got to take the train home. Thank you for not only getting me the audition, but for helping me prepare. Oh, and if I don't see you before tomorrow, break legs. Just be careful, La. What? Don't play dumb. It doesn't suit you. I just met the girl, and I already see the way you look at her when she's in the room. I can't tell you how to live your life, but as your friend and blood brother, I think you should look for people who will love you and not try to find satisfaction in people who won't or are unwilling to return your affection. I don't think Aurora will ever see you as anything other than a friend. I don't think she's been raised to. It's just a crush, just like the one I had on you. It'll go away. Anyways, in the short time I've known her, I think she would make an excellent addition to her trio. Someone serious, young, and naive to balance us out. She could be like the third musketeer, just like we've always wanted. <laughs> Wait, come on now. I know you still have a crush on me. I've seen the way you look at me in my manly cartoon underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it, you do have a good body, but that's about all you're good for. Have you seen the TVs? Come on, that's, that's enough sass. Go to your room, young lady. <laughs> Seriously, though, I know you are romantic, but just don't get your hopes up with this one. Good night, Drew. Good night. Hi. Sorry, I'm just a little bit nervous. Um, this is a copy of my headshot and resume, uh, the audition form, and the sheet. Oh, and the pencil too. It's yours. I didn't want to steal it. Okay, okay, calm down, sweetie. You're doing just fine. I just need to see your invitation in order to finish checking you in. Yeah, of course. Okay. Alright, you'll be number 157. The holding room is down the hallway and to the left. Once check-in is over, I'll be in to come and give you more information about the audition process and the director's requirements. Okay, thank you. And let me know if there's anything I can do to make your job easier. Oh, wow, that's sweet of you. I'll keep that in mind, but for right now, I just need you to take a moment to collect yourself and get ready for this audition, okay? What number are you? Um, 157. Andrew and I are 55 and 56. We probably won't see you much before auditions, but we're going to McLaren's bar afterwards if you want to come with. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just, I just need to sit down for a minute. Okay. My name is Sterling Knight, and I have the pleasure of being number one. And this is life, toil. And wherefore should I toil? Because my father could not keep his place in Eden. What had I done in that? I was unborn. I sought not to be born, nor love the place this birth has brought me to. If one man in all the world can be found, now or forever, to know that you did wrong, to know that you did wrong, that man will either to conquer the world or be crucified by it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that as me thought, her eyes has lost her tongue, for she did speak indistractedly. She loves me sure. I trust no man. I can read lies in their faces. I see intrigue in their protestations. Their eyes, their mouths, their hands, their whole body lies. 
Suspicion poisons every thought I have. And I was intended for a quieter existence. I love men and I wish to believe in them. You are three men of sin, whom destiny that hath to instrument this lower world and what is in it, the never surf that sea hath caused to belch up you. And on this island where man doth not inhabit, you mongst men being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. And even with such like valor, men hang and drown themselves. You're up. I, I, I can't do this. You didn't come this far to give up now. Take a moment, breathe. And remember, you only fail if you don't try. Go get him. Hi, my name is Aurora Thalia, and I'm number 157. Tomb, bridal chamber, eternal prison in the caverned rock, whither I go to find mine own, those many who have perished and whom Persephone hath received among the dead. But I cherish with good hope that my coming will be welcome by my father and pleasant to my mother and welcome, brother, to thee. For when you died, with mine own hands, I washed you and I dressed you and I poured drink servings at your grave. And now, Polynices, tis for thee. Tis for thy tending of your corpse that I win such recompense as this. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Look at this boy. It's something. Very lively, huh? <laughs> What's up, Joe? Hey, thanks for saving our seats. It's busy in here. <laughs> the usual? Uh, yeah. No, you need your food first. Roll, what do you want? Oh, I still have butterflies from the auditions. Uh, I'll pass. Are you sure? More for me? No, no, uh -huh, more for don't me. Don't be an animal. Excuse his behavior. He gets this way after auditions. Yeah, whatever. Where's the bird? Hello? Lena with Alexandria Shakes. I got a call back. Oh, yes, oh. Yes. oh my god, this is exciting. Oh, we Let's should go. celebrate. Bartina, first round's on me. Shut. Ladies, I propose a toast. May Dionysus smile upon us and grant us success and employment. To new friendship. Amen to that. Can you hold just a minute? Um, I've got to take this. Uh, while I'm gone, if you could look through these piles and remove any actors who did not respect you in auditions and uh, anyone who might not be able to take any direction, uh, I'll be right back. Hey, um, where are you, babe? Lena called me about an hour ago about callbacks. Um, are you wrapping up? Shit. 
Oh, I forgot I was supposed to meet you tonight. Um, we're, we're still going over auditions over here. I mean, we've still got to go through callbacks, and I've got to assign sides. I don't think I'm going to make it tonight. You've been traveling for weeks, Xerxes. Looking forward to this date was the only thing keeping me sane with the distance and the silence. I have work, Sterling. I, a job, I, I might add, that is providing for the both of us. You will survive 12 more hours without me, and we'll have all day to work together tomorrow. As my boss, it's not the same, X. I, I want to spend time with my boyfriend, not my director. I am a director. You cannot separate me from my work. Listen, I've got to go back to Lena. She's waiting on me. Yeah. Bye. Hi, I'm Aurora. Up for a challenge? Sorry, sweetheart, you're not my type. Wasn't hitting on you. I just thought maybe you'd like to play with an actual person. You look like you could use a distraction, and I could too. If you really want to. But I'm gonna need another drink. I've narrowed down everything except for your wild card section. Do you want to talk through this set? Mm. <laughs> um. What about her? She almost didn't make it out on the stage, but she was very nice and offered to help. There are a few actors that don't bitch about having to do something other than acting, which is a real sign of her maturity and ability to take direction. Well, she recited Antigone, and, and she was tentative at first, but she grew in confidence. She's passionate and demure, but is, is that enough for a leading role? And she hasn't had a lead role since high school. But aren't you the one who's always telling me? that the greatness of an actor is not measured by the shows that are in their bio, but by their ability to connect with the character. I think we have a lot of young characters this season that could use the genuine love of life that only she can bring. All right, let's call her back. everyone we start in two please wrap up your activities and take a seat the director he'll be here in a minute The world's a stage, and all its men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. This is the motto of Alexandria Shakes, as these two distinguished actors well know. Titans of our community. These veteran actors will be joining us to help play in our 65th anniversary season. Now to celebrate, we're gonna be putting on some pretty big name shows. Romeo and Juliet, Fiddler on the Roof, A Midsummer's Night's Dream, Arcadia, and Les Miserables. Now, 
those of you who are lucky enough to be selected. You will be committing to a 12-month contract, and you'll be challenged to inhabit different worlds. Now, all of you have already proven yourselves to be immensely talented. However, I need to find out who amongst you are the most moldable. Who can change characters every six weeks and still embody each role that they've been assigned? Therefore, we're going to run these auditions a little bit differently. We're going to ask you to shine, and we're going to see what kind of chemistry we can spark. Now, Bridget and Aldwin have very graciously agreed to help demonstrate our exercises. Wonderful. We can all learn a lot from these two. Now it's your turn. Hey, I'm Aurora. Would you like to be partners for this exercise? I'm Caleb. Well, it, uh, it looks like there's a spot upstage left. You want to grab it? Which action would you like to take first? Actually, I'd like you to go first so I can get a feel of what it is we need to do. I think I understood his instructions, but I'd get a better idea if you go first. Yeah, of, of course. Would you like to use a blindfold? Seems kind of pointless. Yes, because when the director looks at us, I want him to see me and not my disability. Does it look all right? Yes. We're at a 15 minute break, sir. Excellent. Everybody relax. Get to know each other's names now that you've become intimate. We'll start back at 3.30. Bathrooms are through the double doors and to the right. There are also vending machines upstairs, but if you have snacks and sugary drinks, I need you to take those to the hallway or outside. I can't believe they already hired two actors. There are tons of people in there fighting for a spot and two positions have already been filled. When I get into the industry, I will work for every role that I play. Try telling Alwyn Lance that. I mean, he's already starred in sci-fi fantasy franchises. I honestly didn't even recognize him. But the girl, she looks really familiar. What is she from? Her mother was Sarah Plaza, which was a household name in the 50s and 60s. I believe Bridget got her start acting with her mother in a sitcom called Wedlock, which did really well. I'm not sure what she's done since. That's it, she looks just like her mother. My grandmother used to love Sierra Plaza films. We watched them all the time while I was growing up. Never seen it. <laughs> What's Alvin's story? All yours, nerd. You know more about the tabloid than I do. Well, he stayed out of them pretty well. I, he was on the news recently because of an injury he sustained on set that caused him to retire. I, I believe in his, uh, his earlier career, he, he started in Alexandria Shakes. Wow, an after fact that escaped Andrews noticed. This is a moment to remember. It happens. I don't know, I think it'd be pretty cool to work with successful actors. I mean, it's not an opportunity a lot of people get. I guess. 
you're new to the industry, but it gets harder and harder to see roles given to TV faces just because they sell seats. I think Alwyn's a pretty high quality actor. I mean, his characters have a lot of depths. <laughs> well, I'm freezing. I'm gonna go warm up outside. Okay. See ya. Bye, Aurora. Hi, is this yours? Uh, I, I found it outside and it looks pretty well loved and I didn't just want anybody to pick it up. Thank you for returning this. I'm Aurora, by the way. I wanted to thank you for what you did for me the other day. I don't think I would even be here if it wasn't for you. Peter Eros, and your service, darling. This is my first callback. Well, professional at least. It's so different from high school. Do you do this often? That girl, Lolita, uh, and, and her roommate, Andrew, they've been helping me prepare, but I feel so behind. <laughs> Did your parents name you after Peter Pan? My parents died before I could find out what they named me after, but my grandmother, she inspired this great love of classic literature. I, uh, I think if I were to ever have a daughter, I would have to name her after Jane Austen's characters. Favorite novel? Well, how could someone just choose one? <laughs> I've always had this really strong connection to Anne of Green Gables. You know, an orphan girl living on a farm with a penchant for storytelling. I would ask what yours is, but the binding is pretty telling. We may be bosom friends, my dear Aurora. My parents actually named me Peter after the disciple, but I had a pretty rough time in that military school they abandoned me in, so Neverland's a pretty great place to escape, don't you think? See you around, Carrots. Welcome back, everyone. That is all I want to explore for today. So I am going to leave you in the very capable hands of our choreographer, Mr. Crystal. He is going to be testing your musical ability. Now, I advise you all to come early tomorrow morning because we will be handing out sides Bro, come what on. What do you think? I think don't, you need a little bit more. Don't make that face. Oh, wait, 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 no. Take a little bit off. Stop. <laughs> Good morning. Morning, uh, Peter. Good morning, everybody. This is my favorite day of auditions, Sides Day. So you're each going to end up with sides, most of which will be from our first play, Romeo and Juliet. Then you will have about an hour to rehearse, and then we'll call you back in, randomly group you, and you'll enact the scene. This will give me an opportunity to see how you run the scene and how you mold with your partner. Okay, when I call your name, come up and get your sides. You're welcome to rehearse anywhere in the hall, but you must remain down here. Wade S. Lolita Stone.
Riley Rawson, Taylor Dow, Noah Coon. Juliet, another Juliet, Lady Capulet, Nurse, Puck, but well, at least that one's different. I can't do this. I'm not Juliet material. I'm not a fluff girl. Don't forget, they're doing a lot of shows throughout the, throughout the season. I've seen Arcadia. You would make a smart Hannah and a great Epony. I think we should try to get with people who we think have the best success of making it. These are a lot of scenes, and I don't think we'll get very far on our own. Any suggestions? I'm thinking maybe Caleb? Oh, Peter, the quiet one with the hat. He's a really diverse actor. I, I think we should work with him. Okay. I yeah. saw the director, I am the boy band actor. If one of us reads with him, that may throw us in good light. That's a good idea. Okay, all right. I'd be honored to read with you all. I may already have a spot in the show, but I'm not guaranteed the spot I want. All right. All right. Uh, how about you two go find others who want to rehearse, and then me and him go find a room? All right. All right. Hey, who has Act 3, Scene 1? Great. We'll read the scene a couple of times and then we'll rotate characters until we've each read. Who has Act 3, Scene 5? Great. We'll split into sections and those of you who are called back as Romeo can rehearse with the available Juliet. <laughs> Caleb, right? Why don't you start as Romeo with Lalita? Actually, could I get someone to go over lines with me? I memorize quickly. I just don't think that they make Braille sites readily available at auditions. I can help. It's not like I have to impress anyone here. Okay, everyone has their assignments. Now break. Okay. Hey. I'm tapping out. Aurora, can you read the scene with some of the boys? I would much rather practice the nurse role with Altwin and Andrew. Sure. Who am I working with? Um. Shirley, your turn to do Romeo. I owe you one. If I have to read one more love scene, I would borrow from Romeo. Go have fun with the boys. Oh, hey! For the record, you're still not my type. This is just acting. Oh, don't worry. Rude actor guys aren't my type either. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Sorry, I lost the connection. Can we try again? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll know. I, I need a minute. Are you out here? Because it's cold and you fled without a coat. Thank you. Yeah. It's just... I'm reciting one of the most famous monologues in all of literature and... I can't establish an emotional connection there, just... 
words on a page. When I was 15, my dad died. At first, I tried boxing and other physical sports to try to ease the pain of his absence. But they didn't make me feel... They made me feel numb. But one day during my lit class, we were reading Julius Caesar out loud, which normally I would hate, but... I happened to tune back in for this one particular line. Cowards may die many times before their deaths. The valiant may taste of death but once. Of all the wonders I yet have heard, it seems most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. I broke down in the middle of class crying because for the first time in months, I faced the reality of my dad's death. And in that moment, I felt pain, but also acceptance, not numbness. Shakespeare didn't capture moments to be mummified on a page. His poetry speaks to us now, in this world. Like your first line. Do you remember a time when you wanted someone to be there and they weren't? Have you ever loved someone so much that you were willing to overlook all of their flaws just because you were so desperate to have them be a part of your life? It doesn't have to be romantic love. A friend or a family member. Find out what the words mean to you and make them come alive. What if I can't? Then I'm not only failing you as my scene partner, but then I'm blowing my shot to be a part of this. The only way you fail is if you don't try. Just doing it is the biggest part. Are you ready to go back inside and try the scene again? We're at time. Everybody, take five, quick bathroom break, and then we'll get started. Hey, is there something wrong, my shining knight? I don't know. Is there, sir? Okay, I do not have time to deal with your insecurities right now. It seems like you don't have time for me at all right now. Is this because I haven't been speaking with you today? <laughs> No, this is because someone bailed on our date. I mean, after weeks of you being gone, you couldn't even make a simple dinner reservation. You even forgot to call him cancel. Shit. Scoot over. No. Please, scoot over. Do you know how long my longest relationship was before I met you? No. Four months. And that was when I was in Europe on the Fulbright, so. How long have you and I been going out? Eight months. And we're living together. Uh, secretly, but we're living together. I've never committed to anyone the way that I've committed to you. No, I know I've been working myself crazy over the past few months, just trying to make this work yeah. so that one of us doesn't have to move to get a job. We can spend the next 12 months together. But it never occurred to me that my actions might be driving a wedge between us instead of making things better. And this secrecy is killing me. I mean, I want the job and I want you. I... I'm just worried I can't have both. Tonight? It'll have to be late because we've got to finish casting. But as soon as I get out, you and I, 
we'll have a chance meeting at a club. And I will whisk you away to the rooftop where I will get a little bit frisky. <laughs> and then we'll go back to the hotel. Until it's time for us to take the train back to our apartment together. <laughs> but until then, I need you to fulfill some fantasies up on my <laughs> stage, Romeo. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to say a word. But that better not be the same boy I saw looking out the window when we left a few weeks ago. Oh, not now, Lena. Mm-hmm. Just be glad I love you like a brother. Your love child. Where did they come from? Mm-mm. Touche. Come on. They're waiting on us. Prepare yourselves for a long day, folks. We're gonna call you up, and we're gonna pair you up with actors that you may or may not know very well. We're gonna have you run the scene once, and then I'm gonna give you some acting instructions afterwards. This will test your ability to work with other actors and to form ensemble. It will also test your ability to take direction and show growth in a short amount of time. When Lena calls your name, please come directly to the stage. We're going to start with the most exhausting emotional scene first, Romeo and Juliet's death. We have Sterling Knight and Elizabeth Teal are up first. Uh, wait, I, I want to make a change. Ms. Teal, if you could uh, come back next with Mr. Landon Turner. Uh, instead, Ms. Thalia, why don't you come down here and uh, show us what you have. This is an emotional scene, so it takes 60 seconds, get to know each other. Grave, oh no, a lantern slaughtered youth, for here lies Juliet. And her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Death lie thou there, interred by a dead man. Oh my love, my wife. Death that hath sucked the honey from thy breath hath had no power yet over thy beauty. Thou hast not been conquered. Dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? that the lean, abhorred monster keeps you here in dark to be his paramour. For fear of that, I still will stay with thee. In this palace of night, I shall never depart. Eyes look thou, thy last. Arms take your last embrace. Doors of breath seal with a righteous kiss.
use to my love. Oh, true apothecary. Thy drugs are quick. Thus with a kiss, I die. Romeo, what's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. O oh, churl, drunk all, and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will kiss thy lips. Haply some poison doth hang on them to make me restorative. Thy lips are warm. Yea, noise. Then I'll be brief. O oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust and let me die. Good. But it could be better. Bridget Aldwin, could you join the kids on the stage? I want you to hold each other as close and as tight as you possibly can. Bridget, your job will be pulling on Miss Thalia. Aldwin, you'll be pulling Mr. Knight. Your job is to break them up. Go. Good. Now go straight into the scene. Grave. Oh no. A lantern slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet. Oh happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust and let me die. That's a wrap. Please gather your things. You will be notified within a week if you were cast. Yes. We're free. That's all right. <laughs> yes. And now the real waiting begins. You know the best way to get over there, right? <laughs> Numbing out the fear with a drink. I'm going, I'm going to the Clarence Bar if anybody wants to join me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's get it. And now the real fun begins, casting. I'm done for the night. I have got to be well rested and clear minded to make this decision. Go ahead and catch a man, but I can't be covering for you once the season starts. Are you sure you're okay locking up by yourself? Go ahead before I change my mind. <laughs> I received a fax this morning from Alexandria Shakes, a one-year contract inviting a Miss Aurora Thalia to participate in their 65th anniversary season. You can imagine my shock considering you've been my client for less than a month and I have to book your auditions for you. So I called. I asked if perhaps there was another young aspiring actress named Aurora Thalia who had booked the role but the social security number they sent me was a complete match to the one we have on file. Tell me why three of my clients whose names were not on the list showed up at that audition. You... you didn't select me to audition? But I, I mean, I got the email with all of the information about how to register Miss Thalia, I may be past my prime, but I'm not senile yet. I sent three names to the company and yours was not one of them. However, uh, a few minutes ago, I received a fax which may be the answer to the problem. Uh, Miss Song, could you come in, please? Yes, ma'am. 
Alexandria Shakes is proud to present Miss Lolita's song with an opportunity of employment that will last one year. The company will provide housing and a financial stipend of $30,000. And you will play supporting roles, Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet, Hermia in Midsummer Night's Dream, future roles to be determined closer to rehearsal. Miss Aurora Thalia. Alexandria Shakes is proud to present you with an offer of employment. They will provide housing and a financial stipend of $20,000 to understudy Juliet and Lady Montague in Romeo and Juliet and Titania in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Future roles determine closer to rehearsal. Needless to say, I'm going to have to find a new assistant. You have three days to get these contracts signed and notarized. This song, you will notice another contract underneath yours. Please deliver that to your roommate. And please come back and see me to negotiate your terms after your contract at Alexandria has ended. And girls, break a leg. <laughs> I can't wait to go home and tell Andrew. The Three Musketeers on an adventure? Are you sad you didn't get the lead? Are you kidding? This is more than I could have ever hoped for. It's a new start. <laughs> this is it. Yes, this is going to be our family for the next year. <laughs> <laughs>